Good evening and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, July 5th, 2022. If you could please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilmember Griscoviak. Here. Councilmember Ray Rauer. Here. Councilmember Hernandez Jr. Here. Councilmember Geisler. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Councilmember Carlson. Here. Mayor Cook. Here. One absent Johnson. Thank you. Uh, why don't we adopt the agenda for tonight? So moved. Second. second. Motion by Geisler, second by Carlson to adopt the agenda. Any corrections or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, and the agenda is adopted. Um, we are right up to our first item tonight, and uh, this is an awesome thing. Swearing in of our new police chief. So if we could get our police chief, our, I'm sorry, our soon to be police chief, <laughs> up front. And I believe his wife, Heidi, will be pinning him. Maybe she could come up front. There you go. It's okay if you break some blood or. Stanky. I, John Stanky. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. No, this together. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And discharge faithfully. And discharge faithfully. The duties of a police chief. The duties of a police chief. For the city of Coon Rapids. For the city of Coon Rapids. In the county of Anoka. In the county of Anoka. In the state of Minnesota. In the state of Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. In case, in case anyone at home hasn't seen this yet, our room is full, and it's full of friends, family, police, fire. It's very impressive, and this is a very big deal. So you've got the floor, Chief. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, it is truly an honor and a privilege to be trusted to lead our department into the future and carry on the tradition of excellence that the Coon Rapids Police Department is known for. I think you all know I love this community and I love our department. Uh, I work in a law enforcement utopia for an agency staffed by the hardest working, most honest and ethical officers in the business. They make it easy to lead. The level of trust and support we receive from our community and our elected officials is second to none. Thank you all. This inspires our officers to continue to serve and protect without hesitation, regardless of events help happening elsewhere because we focus on Coon Rapids. It's a great team to be a part of. I do a lot of work with the community and one thing I know is that our citizens call for officers who are representative of them. This is what I intend to be as we move forward. I'd like to share a little story with you. Uh, when I was a young boy, my mother worked for the Anoka Police Department for Chief Andy Reverie. 
She took me to their open house one year, and after a tour from the chief, I knew from that moment on, there's no question that I wanted to be a police officer when I grew up. Chief Revering was larger than life to me. Next to my dad, he was my second biggest hero. I wanted to be just like him someday. I actually wore a t-shirt that said cops care and had a big Noka badge on it. <laughs> I think I wore it till the shirt wore out. In 1992, <coughs> before many of our officers here tonight were even born, <laughs> Chief Reverend gave me my start in law enforcement. He hired me as a part-time reserve officer at the Anoka Metro Regional Treatment Center, where I worked for three months, filling in for another reserve officer named Eric Peterson while he attended the law enforcement skills program. A few months later, I was fortunate to be hired by my hometown right here in Coon Rapids as a community service officer. And now 29 years later, I stand before you as your new police chief. A lifelong goal of mine has been for Chief Revering to one day witness my swearing in as police chief. Well, Chief Revering is here tonight, all the way from Arizona, where he spends his well-deserved retirement. Wave to us, Chief. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Interesting enough, uh, Eric Peterson is now the Anoka Police Chief. He and I have remained friends all these years. And he reached out to me recently to congratulate me, and he stated, now the easy part's over. It's time to go to work. So that's what I plan to do. Thank you all very much for this opportunity. I'm excited for the future. We look forward to great things, Chief. Congratulations, thank you. I'll just wait for everybody to leave. <laughs> well, here we go again. Here we go. Brian's here. Yeah, yeah, Brian. I thought for a minute, I thought for a minute <laughs> Chief Wise was going to stay, and then he's going too, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> all right. Well, that was, that was awesome. Um, all right. Well, we we're up to uh, approval of the minutes from the June 21st meeting. Motion to approve. Second. I'm sorry, motion by Carlson, second by Hernandez. I was just looking to see if anybody was absent, but nope, there were none absent. Any corrections or discussion? Hearing not, all in none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, and those minutes are approved. All right. Um, item three. This is that uh, we have two items on our consent agenda this evening. And the first one is to adopt resolution 22-78, accepting a donation for a park bench. Um, the city has administered a park bench donation program for many years, and the family of Robert Thistle would like to donate $700 for a park bench to be installed in Crooked Lake Park to honor his memory. Um, so the city council is required to accept financial donations by resolution per state statute. Um, so we're looking to adopt resolution 22-78 to accept a $700 donation from the family of Robert Thistle. The next item on our consent agenda, item four, is just an informational item only, and that's letting us know there was a corporate officer change for Northern Tier, near, Northern Tier Retail LLC doing business as Speedway, and they have um, three stores within town and it's just for informational purposes only. And that actually is our full consent agenda. Your Honor. Councilmember Ray Rower. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Ray Rower and a second by Griscoviak. Uh, discussion or questions? Um, I would just like to comment on the uh, first item, the park bench, um, the, from the Thistle family in, the mem in Bob's memory. Um, this is the second park bench they've they've done. They just they did uh, they provided the funds for one at Crooked Lake Park earlier this year, and Bob Thistle, of course, was an old um, retired city Coon Rapids 
a city manager who stayed in Coon Rapids and, uh, and was, just, went, was just a great guy. As soon as I was running for elected office, he said, anything you need to know, I'll, I'll be happy to help you out. Just a great guy, so. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And we are up to the grant application for the United States Department of Justice, item five. Um, and <laughs> so everybody's gone, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Stemwettle. <laughs> uh, Mayor Council, each year we are given an allocation uh, through the federal government, Department of Justice, uh, for the Edward Byrne JAG uh, grant. And this year, uh, it's a little later than it would typically be, in part because there was some delay in that uh, our allocation sort of gets lumped in into Anoka County, and we were more or less tied to the city of Fridley. Ultimately, Fridley decided after some months of consideration that they didn't want to use their portion of the grant, which allowed us to take the full portion. Usually our grant amount's more like $14,000. This year, we're able to accept the full $24,000 because uh, Fridley has passed on it, so that's why it's coming before you tonight. Um, as you can see in the council memo, it's going to pay for a number of things, including safety equipment for civil unrest, training helmets to be used by the officers uh, during firearms training, handgun clearing chamber for the training facility, pet scanners uh, for reading microchips, and I think that's more or less the list. So it really does provide us an opportunity to pick up some equipment that we don't typically budget for or um, we have needs for uh, but don't have funds set aside, and um, those are the things we've decided to use for this year. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions on that before we open the public hearing on this? No. All right, hearing none, we'll open the public hearing. Is anybody here to address council on the proposed JAG grant expenditures? Holding the public hearing, is anybody here to address council for the public hearing on the proposed JAG grant expenditures? We'll close the public hearing and Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Councilmember Geisler. I'll make a motion to approve entering into an MOU with Anoka County and the grant from the U.S. Department of Justice. Second. Motion by Geisler and a second by Ray Rauer. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, and that motion carries. Uh, next is item six, which is to consider resolution number 22-65 sub nine, awarding contracts for Public Works HVAC modifications, project 22-65. Mr. Hammer, are we happier this time? Mr. Mayor, Council, I am much happier. I wish I would have got some more bids, certainly, but um, having gone through the first round, I was a little nervous where these might come in. We did bid it um, creatively such that we could get one group doing the controls versus the other um, doing most of the mechanical piece. That's where we ran into trouble the last time is the one who's really good at, at the controls bid really high on the mechanical component. This time they didn't even bid on it because they knew there was gonna be some competition. We unfortunately did have one other bidder um, who didn't complete all the required paperwork and so we had to throw them out. It wouldn't have changed the outcome of the low bid anyway. Um, it is under budget um, compared to what we put in for this year's project. And I guess with that, I would recommend we award two contracts, one to Ewell Company in the amount of 47929 and the second to NACE Mechanical in the amount of 231611. <coughs> and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. All right. Do you have any questions for Mr. Hammer? Mm -hmm. Your Honor. Council Member Ray Rower. I make a motion to adopt resolution number 22-65 sub 9, awarding contracts to NAC Mechanical and Electrical Services and UHL Company Incorporated for the Public Works HVAC Modifications Project as described herein. Second. Motion by Ray Rower, second by Carlson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And we are up to item seven, which is to consider an appointment of election judges, approve salaries, and set the canvas date for primary election. 
Ms. Lensmeyer, how are we doing for election judges? Mr. Mayor and Council, we are doing very well, so I appreciate all the uh, support from the community and volunteers. Um, we could use a few more to have in reserve, so if you're still interested, contact my office and we'll get that all set up. And that would be the city clerk's office. Yeah, All correct. right. Um, so Minnesota state statute requires that election judges be appointed by the city council at least 25 days prior to the election. Uh, we have a list of election judges by precinct that's included in our packet, and we're looking to authorize the city clerk to make the appointments and substitutions as deemed necessary during the 25 days prior to the election, and then election law allows for emergency appointments on election day should the need arise. Uh, we're looking, the hourly salary will remain at $11 per hour with the assistant head judge at $13 per hour and the head judge at $15 per hour. Student judges would be paid $11 per hour. And then, of course, the city council will meet to canvas the returns and declare the results on the second or third day after the primary election. So we're looking to set a special meeting to canvas the election results for Friday, August 12th, 2022 at 7.30 a.m. And this meeting would be, should be brief and at least four council members must attend. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Lensmeyer? Okay. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geyser. Um, I would move to approve the appointment of election judges as outlined on our attached list and authorize the city clerk to appoint and assign election judges during the 25 days preceding the election if substitutions are necessary. And finally, approve hourly salary for election judges at $11 per hour, assistant head judges at $13 per hour, and head judges at $15 per hour, and student judges at $11 per hour. And that we schedule a Canvas meeting to, or a meeting to Canvas the results of the primary election for Friday, August 12th at 7.30 a.m. Second. Motion by Geisler and a second by Ray Rauer. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And then we're on to item eight, which is to consider an introduction of an ordinance amending chapter 5-200 alcoholic beverages. Ms. Lensmeyer, do you want to hit the highlights on this or do you want me to read your discussion points? Mr. Mayor, Council, I'll just give you the, this is to bring our, make a couple tweaks to our code to bring it into compliance with the recent legislative changes as it relates to breweries and micro distilleries. All right. Does anybody have any questions on this? If there are no questions, then we will consider ordinance chapter 5-200 for alcoholic beverages um, introduced the, uh, I'm sorry, the amending that ordinance. We'll consider that introduced. And anybody here for open mic this evening? Open mic public comment? I don't have any reports on previous open mics and we are to other business. We're zipping right along. Councilman Ray Robert, go ahead. Um, I do have a couple of things for other business. Um, first of all, I just want to thank Captain Stanky, who is now Chief Stanky. And uh, although they have left to celebrate, i um, very excited to have him as the new police chief. I know from working with him over the last two years as a city council member that he will be focused on community relationship building and keep that long history that Coon Rapids has had going. I also have... Um, information. I met with four residents of the River North Apartments in Coon Rapids at the end of May and they shared a number of concerns regarding the owner of their building, building which is Dominium Apartments. In listening to them I found out Dominium is raising the rent 12.5% which is the maximum allowed by HUD um, within the Section 42 tax credit program that they utilize. Uh, many of these residents in these buildings are on Social Security fixed incomes, and some will have to move if the rent goes up that much. To be clear, Dominium is allowed to raise the rent 12.5% this year, but they are in no way required to raise the rent this amount. This is a choice that they are making. With the residents of River North specifically, I organized a listening session at the beginning of June to hear about the problems that they were experiencing. At this session, a resident shared with me that her rent is now 75% of her total income. 
and a number of residents stated at the session that they'll have to move out when the rent increase takes place. So this is a hardship for these seniors and we need to have Dominion put people over profits. Thank you. All right. Um, any, um, so I would like to say that a great debt of thank you or of gratitude. Um, we just came off a very successful Fourth of July carnival celebration. That was it was great. The, the the rain hit at right times. Other than at the beginning of the firecracker 5K, mm, yep. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of wet people that were really yeah. cold. Then all of a sudden. <laughs> Um, but it was just an amazing event. The, the car show, they had 316 or 17 cars, which is far more than they've ever had before. Um, we introduced a new all-class reunion this, this year on Sunday night that was very well attended. There was 260 people that registered for that, and at least 50 of us had sort of forgot to register. You know, we were busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, and I just want to say that I want to, I want to thank the North Star Lions the Coon Rapids firefighters, and it's actually, it's their, it's their community, it's their social group, or what is it that they call that? The yeah, um, I forget the exact title of it too, but yes, it's yeah. the, their community fund and their community organization separate from uh, their union or the city. Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, but the, the uh, Alina EMS, Anoka County Sheriff, Coon Rapids Public Works, the Coon Rapids Police, who are balancing, they're, they're, they're juggling all of tens of thousands of people out there on the, after the fireworks. And then, and then now when you've got tens of thousands of people in that little area, now all of a sudden you've got a little domestic over here and you've got an accident over there and, and they just handled it so well. It was just tremendous. Um, Anoka Ramsey Community College, we'd like to thank them for being so gracious and letting us use their parking lots and their space. Um, the tens of thousands of residents that showed up for this the fireworks were absolutely amazing. WCCO came out and did a special on about three minutes or four minutes on the news Saturday morning. And then they showed back up for the fireworks. And it was actually pretty good. One of the public works guys who was locking down the security, the guy comes up and he goes, do you have press parking? And he's thinking to himself, yeah, no, I haven't heard that one before, but he's just trying to get in here. And then he looked and saw all the cameras. And the guy, the guy said, I'm from WCCO. I heard you have some of the best fireworks in the state. We want a video. <laughs> Come on in, park right over there. <laughs> um, so, but it's just so much work by so many people, um, and they and they're all just willing to just step up and just participate. It was just tremendous. And I'm even going to forgive the one firefighter that I I helped go around and pick up garbage, and he goes, "Yeah, it's, my dad likes to work too." And I thought, "Yeah, shut <laughs> 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 little aid shot, but." Okay. <laughs> Uh, but the, the parade was great. Everything was just marvelous, and I look forward to, we're going to start the planning shortly sure. for next year. Um, so that's all I've got on that. I have a bunch of other stuff, but you probably already have all that calendar stuff. Well, I, I always have the calendar stuff, right? Oh, so, all right. Yeah, well, well, we know Wreck on the Spot is oh. not happening this week, but look for it next week. Um, buy a smart irrigation controller. So I know that starting last Friday, that you could come with City Hall and there's smart controllers that help make sure that you're using just the amount of water that you need so you can be very efficient in watering your lawn. Um, and they are at a, a discounted price. So I think there's still some available, so I reach out. I was gonna say we should start with asking if there's any left. Because I, I know they were going really they fast. They were going really fast on Friday. But, um, <laughs> and then the other big thing is, it's, it's less than a month away, is Night to Unite. And that is Tuesday, August 2nd. So if you're still looking to hold a party for your neighborhood, uh, make sure that you get your registration in um, so you can get on the list and you can make sure that you, know, you can have a visit from our police or our firefighters and you know, find out how you can get your neighborhood together. It's always a great event. And then the other big thing we've got, um, as Ms. Lemsmeyer said, that um, early absentee voting is already underway for the primary. And so we do have a number of races in our city that are up as well as the county and state. So get ready to vote. And if you're eligible or interested to become an election judge, we could always use a few more. So that would be a great way to get engaged. 
those are my big ones. All right. This Thursday night is the uh, Raquel and the Wildflowers country music down at the dam, the concert in the park. And then, of course, the farmer's market's going on Wednesdays from 3 to 6 over at the Ice Center. I actually printed the list of what's actually you know, there right now, but I'll save you that. Just get over there. <laughs> um, and then to, to just tag on to the, the 19 night, if you go to the city's police department's website for the 19 night, everything is there. I mean, how to organize it, how to invite people, how to just, it's, it's all there. Yeah. And, and if you still have any questions, call the number. They'll lead you right through it. You know, we want to encourage you to get this together because it's just such a great wait for the neighbors. All right. Any other business come before council this evening? Your Honor. Council Member Ray Rower. I just want to thank you for bringing up the 4th of July celebrations. It had, um, we had a great time as a family. The parade every year surprises me because I run out of candy before the end and I buy more the next year and then I run out of candy again. So next time I'm gonna buy even more candy and the goal <laughs> is not to run out. And both of my teenage daughters had an amazing time at the fireworks and I agree with you, I think they are the best. So well, thank amazing. you. I, uh, I traded um, my, my daughter and my granddaughter rode in the cart and I found if, out, if you have a four month old baby in the cart, they don't care if you have candy. They go, ooh, a baby. <laughs> I don't know if I'll have that. <laughs> Just saying, there's probably one, one along the route. You can you can <laughs> All right, any other business to come before council? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn by Geisler, second by Carlson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. Aye.